Just gonna put a new little video on this one. It's again on the uh, infectious disease um, series, and this one is on wound care uh, and the disaster. Uh, so, so basically, we're going to be talking is uh, there's kind of three big category I want to talk about: cellulitis, uh, and some of those names you'll see they're very complicated. <laughs> they like they're scientific and and um, they have like a um, long names so I'll be referring them to cellulitis I'll say cellulitis vibrio and lepto because <laughs> you'll see it's pretty complicated to say so especially with my French accent so we'll be referring to this and then in uh, kind of the second ser second part of it uh, we'll be talking about wound decon especially after um, um, uh, contamination from radioactive stuff um, the AG so um, uh, the, the roles of our uh, dressings their uh, 21st century dressings in this topic uh, a little bit of, on antibiotic not so much which antibiotic but kind of my views on it and uh, the importance of tetanus so let's start so first let's start about cellulitis something that comes and also before we start all the video uh, what I really want to uh, emphasis on is this is in a situation where uh, you cannot have any um, medical attention so you're kind of um, taking on your own uh, it's not to um, take in context of like oh I, I have this those disease now so I, I won't go to the hospital all, all of those disease should always be uh, treated in a hospital but in a situation where you wouldn't have a hospital they they you know because the grid is down or something like this then uh, the situation uh, would require you to take some action so this is in that purpose but every time that you have any of what we're going to be talking about especially uh, lepto and uh, verbrio especially too um, you need to go to the hospital because they'll need to do further testings and stuff like that so uh, with this in mind let's continue uh, so basically right here what you're seeing is somebody that was uh, blogging your stuff so uh, what this is is an insect insect bite and that was six hours after the first thing and 30 hours first so yes just a basic um, a sting bite sometime you can get cellulitis and as you can see it growing and it's growing and it looks like it's growing some other stuff there that crusty stuff here and um, so uh, cellulitis can happen with so what what does uh, the sign and symptoms of cellulitis basically it's an infection inside the skin um in the because the skin has different layers to it and so it's an infection under the skin and the reason that we talk about so obviously because it's it can be pretty common uh with insect bite but as well as um, it's a little bit harder to treat because uh, sometimes depending on the layers that it is infected uh, there's not a lot of um, uh, vessels going there and so some of the antibiotics treatments won't be and we'll talk a little bit further but that's uh, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about but as you can see redness swelling uh, and other stuff but the main thing is that if there's no increased warmth so if you touch uh, and the skin doesn't seem to be different so where the red spot is and you put your hands on and doesn't seem to be red compared to uh, or warm sorry compared to the rest of the leg most likely it's not cellulitis so that's one very easy way to take, check it out here are the different cause uh, two term uh, two thirds of the time it's strepto and one third of the time is a um, and this is an, a point that I want to bring a little bit as you can see there's different reason for different infection and this is why when you go in a hospital a lot of time they'll do a blood test or cultures to understand what's going on and uh, one of the reasons we do this is that then you want to uh, choose the antibiotics and I did a, a video on antibiotics and uh, on pr pretty much like the fish antibiotics but this is one of the reason that it's hard to choose the antibiotics when a lot of time when people talk about antibiotics Oh, let's just take antibiotics but you have to have the right antibiotic for the right um, the, the right thing and so here you, you see like there's all different cause all different infections and each antibiotic sometimes maybe would not work for one but would work for the other one and just to notice a little bit here you get a vibro as well uh, that can cause cellulitis uh, 
here the the reason that I put this uh, this division is not for you to make a diagnose but I want to uh, show you a little bit the class the different class uh, so when you approach uh, cellulitis so the only patient that really if you would go with the antibiotic route um, is they have no sign of systemic toxicity meaning that they don't have um, any sign of tachycardia so a heart, fast heart rate fevers things like that that's the only time that they could be managed with oral antibiotic all the other class have um, other stuff and even you see a class two is somebody with chronic venous insufficiency or morbidity obesity so if you have any medical um, complication uh, oral antibiotic microbial may not be uh, suitable so again limitation of antibiotics uh, for treatment of cellulitis uh, the treatment again that's what they were just talking about so um, the class one can be uh, Manage with oral antibiotic, but only class one. All the other ones, they need either uh, an admission or short-term uh, hospitalization or IV antibiotics or anything because they that's why they need into uh, IV antibiotics. And so only the class one can be close. So that limits again your oral antibiotics. Uh, so now we're gonna talk about Vibril. Uh, his whole name is right here, Vibril vulnificus. <laughs> And this is what it looks like. Um, and it's a bacteria that reads, it lives in the same uh, category as cholera, but obviously it, instead of making you diarrhea, it affects your skin and kind of creates that bubbly kind of uh, feelings and stuff. Uh, from my readings, uh, a lot of case in, during Katrina got that because this is how you can get it. Um, you can either get it two ways. Either you can ingest, so basically by eating some contaminated uh, seafood, but here are um, the, w the part that we're interested in is the infection on the skin and basically um, is basically the warm water uh, from warm seawater is infected with uh, different um, those those same seafood um, and the, the bacteria lives in that water and, and needs to be kind of warm because of that because um, the bacteria kind of grows a little bit better in that and so during Katrina when the ocean kind of overflow and took over the city well now people were inside that water and obviously their skin were in contact with that water and then they can have vibrio vinificus uh, and they can bring to uh, skin breakdown and ulceration and why are we talking about that because those ones are very very like you can literally die in number of days it's uh, an infection that you have to control very quickly uh, uh, so my approach if I would have something like this would be protect my my um, my wounds as best so uh, if you would have like sarin wrap or something try to make that as much waterproof as you could um, maybe and we'll talk a little bit the effects of AG I don't know if a, uh, the uh, AG would be on that but I would throw everything I have on it if you do have antibiotic sure you could get but that would be one of the case that I would try to seek medical help at all costs even if I would be in um, uh, in a disaster grid downs and stuff I would try to get to a hospital of some sort because see some of the limbs will need amputation and uh, this is a very serious condition so if you ever see that if you ever get in contact with that um, they say uh, initial immediately antibiotics to improve your survival but again it's certain uh, antibiotics not all and uh, even that a lot the antibiotic that they talks here they're talking about intravenous antibiotic because uh, peel and again I mentioned quickly in my video that I did on um, fish antibiotics is that um, uh, bioavailability in your blood and the problem with PO since sometimes it's not strong enough to kill that 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 stuff uh, lepto that's the uh, next one 
And so leptar ulcer is an infection disease uh, that caused by uh, animals. And actually here what you see is uh, they were uh, racers and they were in uh, like adventure racers and they were in water that was contaminated. So it, it looks like, you know, they have all those marks and stuff. And it's one of the most common zoonas in the world. And uh, interesting enough is that I, I look at different channels on YouTube and stuff and not many people talk about that infection, which is info uh, interesting because it's probably one that would happens a lot because here's the most re important reservoir rodent rats dog livestock wild animals and cats try to find a city that doesn't have any of those things and so basically what happened is that their urine uh, and uh, we'll see here so basically what happened is that the urine or uh, get into the soil or the water and and basically then it um, it either get on the person so you're either you, you're exposed to the water or you're swallowing that water uh, because you're drinking water that is not suitable or just that by uh, cleaning or something it gets uh, gets straight to your eyes and so basically now you're infected with this uh, lepso uh, le lepto <laughs> let's leave it at that uh, this here are the sign and symptoms of it and when they talk about a non pyretic rash it's basically a pyretic rash it looks like uh, if you press on it any rash and we'll do a, a whole video on rash but basically a rash you press on it if it blanches, meaning that it becomes white and it comes back red usually it's a better sign than if it stays red uh, non pyretic rash is that it stays black it, well it's almost dark dark red a little bit more like on the wine color and then if you press on it, it doesn't change color that's what they call it a puretic rash so it's a non puretic rash uh, the risk factor like I was saying flooding um, uh, which uh, they can get in contact by the water and the best prevention is to wear like every time that you'll be in contact with water uh, wear protective clothing and uh, preventing access to um, the waters that you're going to drink and stuff washing or showering after exposure to urine splash so basically a decon and we'll talk about it in part two and washing and cleaning your wounds if there's anything so again irrigation we talk about that in fast but especially in waters that you're kind of uh, um, uh, suspect about uh, would be a good thing uh, to to catch on and uh, uh, strictly maintaining hygienic measure care uh, when you you work with animals and I think I talked about that in, in a video in the past is that you want to be sure that um, when we're gonna um, if the grid goes down we're gonna start doing stuff that we're not usually to do like we're gonna start hunting or, or uh, get in contact with animals animals as well will be a little bit outside their uh, their um, their area because either the tornado hit the whole forest and so now they have to have a place to go and so they'll come more into the cities and stuff so all this displacement uh, brings the reservoir closer to you or you in contact with the reservoir and this is how you can get some of those disease and stuff so we'll stop here for part one and we'll go to part two.